If you are getting traffic from affiliates to your website and you want to know which affiliates generate the most revenue in GA4, then this video is for you. Here I have a Google Tag Manager demo container where I just have one Google Analytics 4 tag and this tag is responsible for Google Analytics being activated on a page. If you don't know how to install Google Analytics with Google Tag Manager, then I will post a link to another tutorial below this video. This Google Tag Manager container is installed on a demo website. And let's say that when people come from some affiliate websites to my site, then the URL contains the affiliate ID parameter that contains some ID of the affiliate, for example, like this. So what we are going to do in this video is that we will extract this part from the URL and we will send this value together with the purchase to GA4. Later in Google Analytics 4, we will be able to build a report and see which affiliate IDs generate the most revenue. So the first step will be to extract this value and make it as a variable in Google Tag Manager. Since this parameter comes after the question mark, it is called a query parameter or URL parameter. So we can go to Google Tag Manager, then variables, then scroll down and in the user defined variables, click new, then variable configuration and select URL. Here you should select query because we want to extract a particular query parameter then copy the name of that query parameter and paste it right here. Finally, let's name this variable and save it. Now let's test if this variable is working. In Google Tag Manager, click preview, and then we will enter the URL of my demo website. And I will also include the affiliate ID, let's say like this, and then hit connect. Now, if I go to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager and click, let's say, container loaded, and then go to variables, I will see that my affiliate ID variable returns a correct value. But if I go to the next page, for example, here, and then I check the value of the variable on the next page, it is undefined because the affiliate ID is no longer in the URL. So we need some way to persist that variable up until the moment when the purchase happens on a page. And that could be done with cookies. Of course, you could also use local storage, but in this tutorial, I will be using cookies. Below this video, you will find a link to my blog post where I explain how to set cookies with Google Tag Manager. Click that link and then scroll down until you see this code right here. Copy the code, then go to Google Tag Manager, Tags, New, and then in the Tag Configuration section, select Custom HTML. Paste the code. Here we will need to change several things. For example, the name of the cookie. Let's call this gtm underscore affiliate underscore ID. And its value should be not a static text true, but instead we want to insert the value of our URL variable, which was available right here. So that can be done by deleting this text and then start typing double curly braces. Here you will see a list of all variables in your container. So I will scroll down and find the URL variable. And what will happen is that when this code is activated, it will take this particular value and set it in a cookie of which name is this one. Then the expiration time. By default, this code sets the cookie for one month. So if the visitor lands on your site today with the affiliate ID in the URL and then comes back to a site after 32 days, for example, then that cookie will no longer be available here. So it's your decision, how long do you want this cookie to be available in the browser? For sake of demonstration, I will keep this as one month, but you can extend this period to something longer. This is the number of seconds in one month. If you want to extend this for three months, then write a number which is three times higher. But for sake of demonstration, this is enough. And now if I scroll down, I will need to click on triggering and I will need to fire this tag when the affiliate ID is in the URL. So if I go to the preview mode and I click on that previous container loaded event where this variable was here, it contains some value. But if URL does not contain the affiliate ID, its value will be undefined. So basically we could fire our tag on every container loaded event when affiliate ID is not undefined. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, then click plus to create a new trigger. Click trigger configuration, page view, because page view means container loaded. 
and then some page views where the affiliate ID does not equal undefined. And then let's name this trigger. Then click save. Let's name this tag. CHTML stands for custom HTML and click save. Let's test if this is working. So first I will go to the website and check if there is no GTM affiliate ID cookie at the moment. Then click three dots, more tools, developer tools, and then I will type GTM underscore and there is no cookie right here. In fact, on some websites, it is possible that affiliate ID cookie is already created. So you could talk with the developers of the website, maybe they already have that cookie. Or you could just try to look for cookies that contain the affiliate word. And if you find some, maybe that cookie could be used in your setup. In our case, the cookie is not automatically created. So we are creating that with Google Tag Manager. So now if I go to Google Tag Manager, I will click preview and we will test if the cookie is actually works. The preview mode has connected. If I click on container loaded, my tag has fired. Now, if I go to the website, click three dots, more tools, developer tools, then go to application, then cookies. And I mean, expand this section by clicking this triangle and then select your domain here in the filter, you should type GTM underscore. And if everything worked fine, you should see that cookie right here. And this contains the value of the affiliate ID. Now, if I go to another page, that cookie will still be right here and it expires in 30 days. Now the next part, purchase tracking. On my sandbox website, I have this demo page with some fake product. And if I click the purchase, I will be redirected to a thank you page. And on this page, I get the purchase event. If I expand that event, I will see the e-commerce object and information about that purchase. This does not appear automatically on all websites. I asked a developer to implement this kind of code. If you're working with some popular e-commerce platform, then there is a chance that maybe there is some Google Tag Manager integration available on your site, or maybe there is some plugin that you or your developers could install, and that plugin could make this information available in the data layer. If not, then you will need to follow the GA4 e-commerce documentation by Google. I will post a link to it below the video. So once you click that link and then go to make a purchase, here you will see a sample code that your developers could implement and this code should be activated when the purchase happens. Of course, your developer will have to adapt the code to your particular needs. For example, a lot of these parameters right here, they are optional and you don't have to send them. Also, your developer will have to replace these values with the actual values of your purchase. If I purchase a different product, then a different ID should appear right here. Also, it's very important that the parameter names and the data structure is exactly as it is in the documentation. So the data must be in the e-commerce object, and then the parameter names must be like transaction ID, currency. So it should not be order ID or just ID. It must be transaction ID. In my case, this is the data that I have. So this is the product that I purchased. This is transaction ID, currency, value. And now I need to send this information to Google Analytics 4. Since the data right here is following Google's requirements, the process will be fairly simple. Let's go to Google Tag Manager. Then first of all, we'll create a trigger. So go to triggers, new, trigger configuration, custom event, and then enter purchase. I entered this because I have the name of the event right here. So if you have something different here, like transaction, then you will need to enter transaction right here. But in my case, it is purchase. Then let's name this trigger and click save. Then let's go to tags, click new, tag configuration, Google Analytics and GA4 event. Here you will need to paste the measurement ID of your web data stream in Google Analytics 4. You can find that by going to your GA4 property, then admin data streams, then select your website data stream and copy this measurement ID. Then the name of the event must be purchased regardless of what you have in the data layer. And then click more settings, send e-commerce data and keep data layer as the data source. This means that 
when this tag is fired, it will take this data from the data layer and will send it to GA4. But we are not done yet because we also want to send the affiliate ID with this purchase to GA4. We can do that by clicking event parameters, then add parameter, and then come up with some name. For example, affiliate ID sounds good enough. Now the value. We already have the cookie created, but we don't have a variable that reads that cookie. Let me remind you about that cookie. So if I go to the website, then three dots, more tools and developer tools. And then in the cookies section, I enter GTM underscore. This is the cookie. Now I need a GTM variable that reads this cookie. So I will copy this cookie name, then go to Google Tag Manager. And here I will click this button to insert a variable and we will create a new variable. Click plus right here, then select variable configuration, first party cookie and enter the cookie name. Then let's name this variable and click save. So now when the purchase happens on a page, this tag will fire, it will send the e-commerce data from the data layer. And if the cookie is present on a page, this tag will also send the affiliate ID. Now let's scroll down and in the triggering section, click anywhere and select custom purchase. Then let's name this tag and click save. Finally, let's test everything. Click preview. This will refresh the preview mode. And if I click any event right here and go to variables, I should already see that my cookie variable returns a correct value. Ignore this unknown variable type issue if you see it because there is a bug in GTM preview mode, but this variable still works just fine. Now, if I go to the page where I can purchase the product, so I will click purchase. This is the success page. If I go to the preview mode, I will see the purchase. I click it, then I can go to tags and I see that my tag fired. Now, if I go to Google Analytics and then in the admin section, I go to debug view. Here I will see the purchase event. And if I click it, one of the parameters here is affiliate ID. And if I expand it, I see that the purchase was sent with this particular affiliate ID. In order to start seeing affiliate ID in our reports, and I mean start seeing after at least 24 hours, we have to register it as a custom dimension because we just came up with the name affiliate ID out of the box GA4 does not have that kind of dimension. So to do this, we have to go to the admin section of GA4 property, then look for custom definitions and in custom dimensions, click create custom dimension. Here we have to enter the name of the ID. This will be displayed in the reports. Affiliate ID sounds good enough. Then keep the scope as event. Then if you want, you can enter description, but this is optional. And then here we have to enter the event parameter. This is the parameter that we set in the purchase tag. So it must be exactly like this. If you name this parameter here, something else, then that something else must be entered right here. If you don't see any suggestions like autocomplete, don't worry. Just enter the name of the parameter exactly as you configured that in the tag. So click save. And after this is done, and after you submit your changes in Google Tag Manager container, which means that you would need to click submit and then complete all the steps, then wait for at least 24 hours, collect some data. If you want, you can also do some test purchases with affiliate ID just to make sure that this is working. And then after 24 hours, you will be able to see that data in reports such as explorations. I am recording this part of the video 48 hours after I submitted all the changes. So now let's take a look how to build a sample report. In Google Analytics, go to explore, then click blank, and then in dimensions, click plus to add the affiliate ID, click the checkbox, then import, and then add certain metrics. For example, purchase revenue might be one of them. I will click plus right here, then enter purchase revenue, click checkbox, then import. And I will just double click on this dimension and this metric. And here we can see how much revenue did we get from this particular affiliate ID. And if you see some not set or empty rows, it means that those particular purchases did not come from your affiliates. 
if I had more affiliates, then all those ID would have listed right here. Of course, if the traffic from those affiliates actually converts and makes purchases. And that's how you can track affiliate sales with Google Analytics 4. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.